algebra students. Um, so we are starting our second method uh, of solving systems of equations. And if you'll look back in your notebook, just think back to what we learned last week. Um, remember, we're in the unit, unit six systems of equations, and we're learning, um, we're actually going to learn three different ways of solving these. The first way was to solve systems of equation using substitution. And that's what we did last week, where we solved one of the equations for one of the variables, we plugged it in, we solved for the one of the missing variables, and then we back substituted um, in order to get the values of x and y. So remember, our goal last week was to find out what the values of x or y are. That's what we mean when we're talking about solving a system of equation. Um, today, we're going to work on a different way of solving a system of equation, and it's called elimination. So we are solving still solving systems of equations, I'm going to put SOE, using what we call elimination. All right, and someone asked uh, last week, you know, what happens, or one of the things that substitution sort of hinged on was one of the variables being by itself, right? We always were looking for like the x by itself or the uh, the y by itself, y was equal to something, or we wanted to solve something y is equal to, or even when we got over to the special cases, we needed, you know, an x equal to, or we needed a variable isolated by itself. And someone asked last week, well, what happens if there was a coefficient in front of there? Um, you still could solve, but you might end up with some fractions, but we're going to learn today how to deal uh, with equations that have coefficients in front of all of the values, or might have coefficients in front of all the values and how to, an, another way, this is just another way of solving these systems of equations. So we're going to look at an example first that actually doesn't have coefficients in front of all of the, um, all of the, the variables, but it's going to illustrate our point very nicely. So uh, let's look at this example. So we know a system of equation. Let's just call this, actually we have five examples. So if you want to um, maybe go ahead and split your page in half. Maybe don't go all the way down because we're going to have that fifth example. So maybe just start and we'll call this example one. All right. And so our system is going to be x plus 2 y equals 5 and 3x minus 2 y equals 7. Now, just like I told you last week, of how when you're solving using substitution, most of the time it's easier if you'll write the equations um, sort of horizontally across from each other on the page. When we're using elimination, it's actually better to stack them up um, on top of each other, and I'll show you why. So here's what we mean by elimination. We want to know, again, what the value of x and y is. Well, if you notice, there's something really interesting about um, the coefficients in front of the y. Right, and so if we look at them very closely, we see that we've got a 2y, we've got a positive 2y here, and we've got a negative 2y here. Um, the way that elimination works is that we make sure, first of all, that we have the equations in standard form. And what I mean by that is, notice how we have these written. The x is first, the y, um, the y variable comes second, and then we have these plain numbers at the end. If this had been in any other order, I would want to make sure that I had x first, and then plus or minus something y, and then a number at the end. So we want to make sure they're, they're, the variables are lined up first, that x is over top of x, y is over top of y, and then the numbers are over top of each other. So that's the first thing. Then, once we've got them lined up like this, we want to determine the variable that we can eliminate. And the one that we're going to eliminate is actually the one that ends up having the same coefficient in front of each other. Now, we're going to talk in a minute about what happens if they don't have the same coefficient. We can actually still eliminate them. We just have to do something first. But when you find the variable that has the same coefficients in front of it, in this case, there's both there's a 2 in front of the y on both, uh, both equations, that's going to be our uh, variable that we're going to eliminate. Now, we have to decide how we're going to eliminate it. Well, when we're talking about elimination, what we mean is making something go to zero, right? If you eliminate something, that means that it's going to zero, it's canceling out. Well, what would we do to, and if you look at the sign in front of this, this is actually plus 2y and this is actually minus 2y. So what will we do to a positive 2 and a negative 2 in order to get them to equal zero? Well, we would add them, right? 2, positive 2 plus negative 2. 
actually equals zero. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add these equations together. Now I'm going to put this last equation in parentheses because here's what I'm doing. I'm taking this entire equation. You could even put it in parentheses if you wanted to. I'm taking this entire equation and I'm going to add this entire equation to it. And that's a lot more simple than you think it might be. All we have to do is add the elements or add the particular. That's why we wanted the variables lined up in the first place. So um, up here we of course have 1x. If you want to put the 1 in front of it that's fine. So 1x plus 3x. Well, if you have 1x and you add 3x to it, that's 4x. So notice all I've done there is I've added my x, um, my x coefficients. Here was the whole point was that if I have plus 2, uh, a positive 2 plus negative 2, that equals 0. And so instead of actually writing equal to 0 down here, I'm just going to put a slash through it. That That's canceled. That's eliminated. That's gone because that's going to be 0. And if it makes you feel better, you could put a 0 down here, but it's really not necessary. And then we've got equal to, well, then we're going to add our elements that are just numbers. So 5 plus 7 actually equals 12. Now, notice what's nice about this. The y's have been eliminated because we added them together, got 0. And now we're left with just x, and there's only, we've got 4x is equal to 12. The only step left is to just simply divide by 4 in order to get x by itself. So x equals 3. And then I have solved... Um, for my x value. And notice that was maybe a little quicker than actually trying to solve one of these for an individual variable and then substituting it in and then solving it. Once I noticed that I was able to eliminate that middle term, it, the, it only took me one more step to actually solve for the x value. Now you do have to know how to use substitution though once you get here because once we know what x is, well then, now that we've eliminated the y, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this x value and I'm going to plug it into either one of these equations. It doesn't matter. You can choose your favorite one. Maybe choose the one that's easiest. Um, in this case, I think the first one looks easiest just because it's just got a plain x by itself. There was a 1 in front of that. Um, but you could plug it into either one. So then we make the substitution step. And so I'm just going to use, I'm going to choose the first equation. Again, I could choose the second one. Um, but with the first equation, it was 1 times x, or just x. Um, so I plug in my 3, plus 2y is equal to 5, and then I'm able to solve for y. So I just substitute in. Once I do the elimination step, then I'm able to use substitution um, to substitute back in. And it just, it takes less time, um, especially if this lines up really nicely. Um, so let's solve for y. So I'm going to subtract 3 from each side. I get 2y is equal to 2, and then divide by 2, and you get y is equal to 1. And so my final answer is going to be x equals 3, y equals 1, or if you wrote it as an ordered pair, we would say 3, 1. And so that's the elimination method. Let's try another one, just in case you looked at that and you're like, wait a second, I think you're making stuff up, making it harder, making it crazy, Miss Wallace. Don't panic. Let's look at another example. Um, all right, example number 2. So again, if we're going to use elimination, it's nice when we end up with a coefficient in two equations that's the same that we're able to eliminate. So this um, equation is, the first one is going to be 3x minus 15y is equal to 20, negative 24. Sorry, there's a negative in front of that. Um, and then 3x plus 7y is equal to negative 2. Now again, we're on the lookout, if we're going to be using the elimination method, we're on the lookout for coefficients that are the same. And notice how everything's nice and lined up here. We've got our x's lined up on top of each other, y's lined up on top of each other, and the numbers lined up on top of each other. And we're looking again for the coefficient that's the same. So I notice right off the bat that my coefficients um, in front of my x are the same. Um, and they're, they're both threes, right? So I want to, I'm like, yes, I can eliminate those. I can just get rid of them, slash them through. But I have to decide, well, how? How do I make that zero? So how would I get 3x um, to cancel out or to go to zero with another 3x? Now notice over here, one was positive and one was negative. So what we did was we added them because positive two plus negative two is zero. But how do we make positive three and positive three zero? Well, here we're going to have to subtract. So again, it makes me feel better to put a parenthesis around the whole thing because I'm subtracting the whole equation. So I'm going to put a minus out in front here. And again, if it makes you feel better, you could put parentheses around the first one as well to say I'm taking this whole thing and I'm subtracting this whole thing. So we have to make sure we come out here and get the subtraction every time. So first of all, it's 3x minus 3x. That's what's getting eliminated. So I just mark through it. 
Then I've got negative 15 minus 7. Again, we want to we have to come out here and get the negative um, because we're subtracting this whole thing. So this is really a negative 7 in here, or a minus, we're minusing positive 7 if you want to think of it that way. Um, so negative 15 minus 7 um, gives me or leaves me with negative 22. That's the same thing as 15 plus 7. And the y goes with it is equal to. And then we have negative 24 minus negative 2, which actually changes to plus 2, right? And so if you need, and even if you need to write that off to the side, you know, you could do a little bit of extra work over here. It's minus negative 2, which actually means we're adding 2. Um, and so negative 24 plus 2 more gives me negative 22 as well. Well, how about that? And so when I divide by negative 22 on each side, I get y is equal to 1. And notice how once you once you do that elimination step, you only have one more step. You don't have to go through like the whole DCBA method in order to solve it. It just makes the equation a little simpler. So now we have our y. And then remember, once we get that, we are going to use substitution to just back up and plug it into one or the other. And it doesn't matter. I don't know. This has The second one has smaller numbers, so I'm going to substitute it into that second one. You could choose either one. It's going to give you the same answer. So we get 3x plus 7 times 1 is equal to negative 2. And now I'm just going to solve that. So that's 3x plus 7 is equal to negative 2. We're going to subtract 7 from each side. And we get 3x is equal to negative 9. Divide by 3 on each side. And we get x is equal to negative 3. Negative 3. There you go. Um, so my x value is negative 3 and my y value is 1. Oops. There we go. Now you can see the whole thing. So again, the whole point of using the elimination method is still the same. The goal is the same to get the x and y value. But the goal here is to make life a little bit easier, especially when we have coefficients. Notice this one did have, you didn't have an isolated variable. So substitution might have been a little harder um, because you couldn't isolate one of the variables nice and neat. Um, and so, but when we do have coefficients that are the same, we're able to eliminate them. Now we're going to look at a couple of examples because you might be asking yourself, well, I mean, that's nice and all if we end up with twos here or a two and a negative two, or if we end up with threes, we can either add opposites to get zero and eliminate them, or we can subtract uh, the same numbers to get zero and eliminate them. But what happens if we don't actually end up with the same coefficient in front of each other? And so that's what we're going to look at next. So if you want to maybe sort of draw off your, you know, separate your page from the next couple of examples and continue your split down the middle. Remember, we're going to try to do five examples, so we're going to try to leave some room down here at the bottom. I don't know. We may have to flip the page to actually get the fifth example in, but let's look at example number three. Um, so, again, we want to make sure we're writing our equations lined up with each other, but this equation is going to be x plus y is equal to 900, and we have 5x plus 10y is equal to 5,500. <laughs> so those numbers at the end are very large. Um, however, um, notice here we do not have the same coefficients. And this is for maybe an easy one. And maybe you're thinking, oh, I think I might see what's going to happen here. Um, but notice that we have a, here we have a 1 in front of the x. Here we have a 5 coefficient. Here we have a 1. Here we have a 10. And then we have our numbers. Um, everything's nice and lined up. But what are we going to eliminate? Because the coefficients in front of the x are not the same and the coefficients in front of the y are not the same. Um, well, we can actually manipulate our equation um, in order to make, in order to force the uh, coefficients in front to be the same. So if we wanted, notice there's a 5x in front here. If we wanted a 5 right here, what would we need to multiply x by to get a 5x? We would just multiply the whole thing by 5, right? Um, and if I wanted a 10 in front of here, I would just need to multiply by 10. Now, what you do to one of the elements, what you do to one of the terms, if you're going to multiply 5 by x, you actually have to multiply the whole thing by 5. Not just You can't just multiply x by, you can't just stick a 5 there, that changes the equation. But if I wanted to ensure that the coefficients here were going to be the same, what I could do is I could put parentheses around my entire top equation, and I'm going to multiply the whole thing by 5, almost like distributing, making sure that everything gets multiplied by 5. So watch what happens. If I take just that whole top equation and I multiply it by 5, 
I'm going to come down here. I'm actually going to make a line so I know that I'm not dealing, I'm dealing with the same set of equations. So I'm going to take 5, multiply by x, so that's 5x. 5 times y would be 5y. And 5 times 900 actually gives me 4,500. And you can use Desmos too um, to get that. Okay, so that's good. And now I can just recopy my second equation because I, it already had a 5x plus 10y is equal to 5,500. So once I took 5 and I multiplied that entire top equation by 5, just multiplied everything by 5, now I realize that, okay, now I can eliminate um, because I actually do have the same coefficient in front. And so now we're ready to eliminate. We would just throw some parentheses around that second equation. And how would I eliminate 5x and 5x? I would need to subtract. So 5x minus 5x is 0. That's canceled. 5y take away 10y gives me negative 5y is equal to 4,500 take away 5,500. And you can use Desmos for that, but that's negative 1,000. And then we just have to divide by negative 5. So divide by negative 5, y equals 200. And I'm ready to plug that back into one of my initial equations. And so I'm going to take it. And actually, you know, before we multiplied um, the entire first equation by 5, we had a pretty nice equation here, right? It was just x plus y equals 900. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to plug it into that first one because it was simpler. Um, so we have x plus the y value of 200 is equal to 900. Um, that's just plugging the y value in for the y there. And we're going to subtract 200 from each side. And we end up with x is equal to 700. Um, so we have the coordinate 700 and y was 200. Which makes um, our equation work out very nicely. Um, so the goal here, if you do not have the same uh, coefficient in front of one of the variables, you can force it to be the same. Now, we could have multiplied this top one by 10, and we could have eliminated the y just as easy. It would have come out to be the same answer. Um, so let's look at another one like that where you would have to um, force the equation or force the coefficients to be the same in the equation. So remember, uh, five examples. We are going to have to put one on the back. This is going to be example number four. So we have 3x plus y is equal to 10. And then we have negative 4x minus 2y is equal to 2. And so we want to identify first what would be the easiest way to get the coefficients to be the same. Um, we've got a 3 and a 4. And it's hard. There's nothing I can multiply 3 by to actually get 4 other than a decimal. So it might be harder to force the 3 to become a 4 or, in turn, to make the 4 become a 3. So it's going to be hard to get the x's um, equal to each other. However, the y here has a 1 in front of it and here's a 2. And so it will be a little bit easier to make sure that there's a 2 in front of this y um, to get it to be the same as the 2 that's in front of this y. Uh, so we're going to multiply the top equation by, can you think of what we would multiply by to make it the same? It's going to have to be 2. Now, could you multiply it by negative 2 and get them exactly the same? Um, sure. But know that if we just make sure that the number's the same, the sign doesn't have to necessarily be the same. That's just a matter of whether I'm going to add or subtract in the end. So um, everything's going to get multiplied by 2. Don't ask me why I wrote a 2 over here. I mean, you could just to remind you to multiply by 10. But everything needs to be multiplied by 2, including that number over there on the end. Um, so I'm going to rewrite that first equation. 2 times 3 would gives me 6x plus 2 times y gives me 2y is equal to 2 times 10 gives me 20. Everything on the top equation just got doubled. And the whole goal, remember, is to be able to eliminate the y. So the second equation is going to stay the same. Uh, negative 4 minus 2y is equal to 2. We have to think, how do we make this 0? How do we actually get to mark that out and eliminate it? So I put the second one in parentheses. And they're different signs. Um, so in order to make that 0, how do I get positive 2 um, and negative 2 to equal 0? Oh, I add them because positive 2 plus negative 2 is 0. So I'm going to add all the elements. Uh, 6 plus negative 4 gives me 2x. Uh, positive 2 and negative 2 added does give me 0, so that gets gone. And then it's equal to 20 plus 2, which is 22. Divide by 2 
and we get x is equal to 11. There's just that one step left afterwards. Um, and then we go back and substitute. So we plug in 11. I guess I'm going to use maybe the first one. It has less negatives. So I'm going to plug it into the first one. So it's 3 times 11 plus y is equal to 10. Um, that gives me 33 plus y is equal to 10. And then I have to subtract 33. And 10 minus 33 is negative 23. So y is equal to negative 23. So my coordinate here would be 11. Negative 23 should be your final answer. So for solving systems of equations using elimination, we are either looking for the coefficient that's the same in order to eliminate it. All we have to ask ourselves is how do we make it zero? Or we are forcing one of the equations to have the same coefficient so that we're then able to decide, do I need to subtract or add the equations together to get that, um, to get one of the variables to be eliminated. Now. The last example I'm going to show you, and so if you'll flip it over, you can put yours on the back. I'm going to skip over to this page so you don't have to see ink um, that's come through. Um, the last example, so example number six, is going to be what happens if you see something like this. So this is, you know, there's no isolated variables. Substitution is going to be hard. 3x plus 6y is equal to 6. All right. Take a second, write that down. We got 5x plus 4y is equal to negative 14. 3x plus 6y is equal to 6. So notice, first of all, the x's are lined up, the y's are lined up, numbers are lined up. That's good. Everything we got lined up. Um, do we have any of the same coefficients? Well, this is a 5 and that's a 3, so those are not the same. This is a 4 and a 6. Those are not the same. So we can't eliminate right off the bat. Um, think about also then, is there anything I could multiply 5 by to make it a 3? Well, no. Is there anything I could multiply 3 by to get it a 5? No. So it's going to be hard to line those up. Um, what about 4 and 6? Well, you, there's nothing, no whole number that you can multiply 4 by to get 6, or no whole number you can multiply 6 by to get 4. So how are we going to eliminate these? How are we going to make them the same? Well, we're going to end up, just like we did over here where we manipulated one of the equations, um, by multiplying every element of it to get the same. For an, an equation, a set of equations or system of equations like this, we can actually multiply both of the equations by any whole number that we like in order to force the coefficients to be the same. Now, you could choose 5 or 3 to work with, or you could choose 4 or 6, and maybe I'll even show you an example of what, um, if you did the other one, what it would look like. So I'm just going to very quickly over here off to the side show you what it would have looked like if you chose the other one. Um, so I'm going to work with the X's just because I see them first. Um, so what we're thinking about sort of the um, the lowest common multiple like what could I change 5 into that it would also be have in common with 3 that I could also change or multiply something by 5 and 3 in order to get the same number and I hope that you're thinking in your head um, the number 15, right? Because 5 times 3 is 15. So then that would make them the same. So what would I need to multiply 5 by to get 15? Well, that would mean I would need to multiply the whole thing by 3. And then on the bottom, I would need to multiply the whole thing by 5 in order to get 15 here. Um, and that's going to make sure that the x's are the same. So I'm going to draw my line. And if I multiply everything by 3 here and everything by 5 here, that's going to be 3 times 5 is 15. Top equation would be 15x plus 3 times 4, which is 12y, is equal to, uh, I don't know, 14 times 3 off the top of my head. That's 12. Uh, carry the 1, that's 3, plus 1 more is 4. So 40, negative 42 is 3 times negative 14. And then the second equation is getting multiplied by 5. So 5 times 3 is 15. That's good. We wanted those to be the same. 5 times 6 gives me 30y. And then 5 times 6 is also 30. And now we're ready to eliminate. Now, we'll, we'll come back to this in just a second, but I just want to show you. You could have used the 4 and the 6. Like, if you didn't care about the 5 and the 3 and you wanted to eliminate the y's, you could have also multiplied um, the 4 and the 6 to get something in common. Of course, you could have done the top by 6 and the bottom by 4 to make them the same. But 6 and 4 actually have a lower, um, uh, lowest common multiple. Um, which would be 12. So we could have made them both 12s by multiplying the top equation by 3 and the bottom equation by 2, which would have ended up with, you know, 15. This would have been 15x. Actually, it's the same on the top, right? 15x plus 12y 
is equal to negative 42. And on the bottom, you would have had 2 times 3, which is 6x, and 2 times 6, which is 12y, and then 2 times uh, 6, which is 12. So notice, our, in this case, our y's would have been the same, and so we could have eliminated them. So you can do it either way. Now I'm going to come back to this and do it. Um, but just know that we could have made sure that the y's had the same coefficient as well. Um, so we're ready to eliminate over here. I'm going to put the second one in parentheses because to get 15 and 15 to cancel, we're going to have to subtract them. 15 minus 15 eliminates. Uh, 12 minus 30 will give me negative 18 is equal to. And then negative 42 take away 30 more is going to give me, oh, and there's a y there, sorry. Um, negative 42 take away 30 is going to give me negative 72. Negative 72. And then the last step is to divide by 18. And 72 divided by 18. Does that come out to be 4? I hope. I think. If I had a calculator in front of me. Um, negative 72 divided by 18 is positive 4. I hope I'm right. Let me double check that and just make sure. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, all right, so y is equal to 4, and then we're ready to substitute, right? So we take it back. I'm going to take it to this one. I'm going to avoid that negative 14. Um, so I'm just going to choose the second equation. So 3x plus 6 times 4 is equal to 6, and so that's 3x plus 24 is equal to 6. Subtract 24 minus 24. That cancels. 3x is equal to negative 18 and then divide by 3 and we get x is equal to negative 6 and so your final answer is going to be negative 6 4 and the same thing would have happened if we'd eliminated the 12 um, I'm not going to work through all of that but you could have um, subtracted of course here and eliminated your 12s and got 15 minus 6 would be 9x is equal to negative 42 minus 12 more would have been negative 54. And then if you divided by 9, guess what? That's x is equal to negative 6, which is exactly what we got here. And if we back substituted, we would have got y is equal to 4. So as long as you can ensure that your coefficients are the same, you can eliminate them. That's why we call this solving systems of equation using elimination, they will either be that way in the beginning, line them up and eliminate them, either by adding the equations or subtracting them. You will either have to manip you might have to manipulate one of them and multiply the whole equation by something to make sure that they're the same. Or you will be working through a few problems where none of the coefficients were the same and you can't just multiply one equation to make it equal to uh, some of the coefficients on the other one, so you may have to multiply both. You can choose any whole number as long as you multiply everything by that same number, and you can eliminate it. So the goal here is to eliminate, but the goal is always to solve system to solve a system of equation. Your goal is to still get x and y is equal to. Make sure you email me if you have any questions, and good luck practicing solving systems of equations using elimination.